And what is up everybody, Technicals Tinkers here, back at you with the update for the 3D print operation. If you're unfamiliar and new to the channel, welcome. I'm a small business owner. I have a business that has nothing to do with 3D printing, but I'm into 3D printing and I thought maybe I can spin this up at home, prove the concept, and then I can move it into my warehouse because I got this big warehouse with all this extra space and I thought maybe a little 3D printing subsidiary would go nicely in there. So subscribe to the channel to follow me along in this journey or whatever this is. What am I working on today? Everything is buzzing. All machines are tasked on something. We've got another attempt at our character model here. This one's coming out, seems to be coming out a lot better, painted on a lot more supports. It's not, uh, not a particularly fine layer height on this character model, uh, but it's kind of more of a test. And with the character models, I've kind of got a bit of a different sort of strategy I'm thinking about, more on that later. Same story down here on the P1P, sort of a more uh, a different character model, a little simpler. So hopefully that comes out with a little more success. All the Cobras and the Sobol are tasked on these rolling trays. I mentioned these rolling trays in previous videos because my other business is a smoke shop. And so people that go into smoke shops like doing smoky kind of things. And so I had this simple model uh, for a rolling tray to put your herbals in or whatever. Uh, so I downloaded it and my thinking is, is I'm just going to give it away in my shop. You know, you spend over a hundred dollars, you'll get a little rolling tray. It's actually quite convenient. Uh, it's a little place to store your goods, a little makeshift grinder, kind of a way to keep organized. And it would be a nice little touch for the customers that come in because who doesn't like getting free stuff. I'm kind of taking the opportunity to use some of this filament that I got from Chi2 Systems. It's their Conjure matte PLA and their Conjure silk PLAs, the rainbow silk and this purple blue uh, silk very cool effect coming out if you want to check this out or buy it link to Amazon is in the description below Conjure didn't or uh, T2 didn't send me any money for this, but they did send me these three rolls of filament Thank you again to them. I got the last little bit of this purple blue going over here on Cobra one Really cool effect coming out really good. I think it was the temperature setting. It needed to be dialed up This rainbow silk PLA looking pretty good just started on that one though and we've got a bunch of lids and grinder caps going over here on the other two covers. And for the most exciting portion of the day, we were able to glue together and get a coat of paint here on our little boy atomic bomb. Obviously a little bit uneven, burned a whole can of paint on this, but it came out this nice, I uh, used camo uh, spray paint on this, or, you know, I guess when you call it spray paint, it sounds cheap, so I'm gonna call it paint spray. Uh, <laughs> The, really, the point of this is to uh, get something on Etsy to give people an idea of the size. I'm probably wanting to uh, actually sell this model because I kind of like it. <laughs> I kind of want to put it in my, uh, keep it in my office here or something like that. Um, so this model, here's a smaller version that came off the Bamboo AMS, and that's about as big as I can make it. So as you can see, there's a little bit of a size difference. Now, it's a two-color model, so I've got to paint these gray and... These, all these little nubbins, I'm not gonna mask off this. And I thought about that, like, cause I was like, the original idea was to print the whole thing in gray and then mask off the gray parts and paint over it green. I was like, there's no way I'm not gonna get overspray. There's no way tape's gonna stick to that. I'm not dipping these in wax. It's gonna take an eternity. Uh, so my plan is to use these. These are acrylic marker paint pens. Never used these before. And I really hate painting. I, I really do not want to have to do this, but I got to test it out and see if it works because this is pretty big. My thinking is that this is, you know, several hundred dollars at least and someone that's into militaria, they might like it. And so, you know, maybe it's worth the time because I'm in the fledgling stage. Maybe in the future I can find a way to scale this up. But as of right now, I'm just kind of accepting a lot of things that I don't want to do. I'm going to have to do. And, you know, if I want this thing to kind of move along and explore this whole 3D print realm, it's just something I'm going to have to grip my teeth and go for. So I'm going to use these little paint pens and see if I can get a nice finish on this. I'm not about to do that right now because I it's almost dinner time. I only eat there. So I'm going to throw it over to my future self, as I commonly do, to see what happened through the course of the night, what kind of disastrous, catastrophic failures occurred, or catastrophic successes. Are, catastro are successes something that can be catastrophic? I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Anyway, over to my future self right now. And good morning, beloved. It's the next day here. We've had a lot of stuff finish up in the night, so let's check in and see what happened. All right, so rolling tray over here on Cobra One using the, come on. Right. Let's do this. We'll continue to do this. 
So I printed, because the silk PLA, I printed with the bed temperature that was a little higher because I was a little concerned about it sticking. It's a little cold out. This is that uh, dual tone silk PLA. You know, it's like, I thought, I ran it at a little higher temperature too because I thought it would blend up. It's still a cool effect, but there is like a demarcation there between the, uh, the purples and the blues. Still a very cool effect, uh, this, this silk. And the print came out pretty good. It's a little... Well, actually, no, it's rubbing off. It always feels kind of greasy, these uh, silk prints. I don't know what that is. It just feels a little greasy. I don't know if it's like a texture thing, but that one looks pretty good. Rainbow silk here came out pretty good. This is a little more, um, you know, because the, the, the color changed, the gradient a little smoother. Really like that. Over here on the Soval, we had four on here. All came out pretty good. This is a matte rainbow and used up most of the spool. I think that the rest of that spool spent. Maybe I'll just like use that and the rest of these silks and make some kind of like mutt version of this. But print on this came out pretty good. Feels nice and solid, perfectly acceptable for our purpose. I like the, uh, the rainbow, the pastel gradient sort of there. All of our caps seem to come out just fine over there and over there. And our character model looking pretty good. Doesn't seem to be having any issues looking underneath the model. As far as I can tell, the overhangs seem okay. Should expect that to be done pretty soon. How much time we got left? 12, 12 hours, Jesus. Down here on the P1P, stopped in the course of the night, ran out of beige, but overall looking pretty good. Yeah, model looks pretty good. I was worried about the infill showing through, but those black uh, ropes, kind of run up through every layer and so if it was on the infill i think it would kind of translate through and just kind of even out the color flush back here i've still yet to come up with a solution so we'll see how big that can get before i uh i have to take action and over here on the giant nuclear bomb i tried using one of these little acrylic paint pens and it would work pretty good but i got about this far before my patience ran out. I really just hate painting, uh, I, the artist kind of thing. It just feels like uh, painting and making food just seem like, uh, not to sound arrogant, but it just seems like, it, I feel like it's something that's beneath me. Like I feel kind of like, oh, why am I doing it? I should not have to do this. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is probably get some actual paint, paint and a brush, uh, just so I can slap it on there, get it done, take a picture, and then just like go hang this up somewhere or sell it for cheap as a scratch and dent on the Etsy. And in the future, what I'm gonna do is just go into the model and chop off these parts, the parts that are gray as seen here, just chop them off, chop off all the little buttons, just make negatives for it and print those separately in gray filament. I'll probably print the whole body, the big body in a cheaper filament, regular PLA, or maybe they make regular PLA in army green. I don't know, I've not seen it. Uh, and then I print the gray parts and just pop them on there, glue them on there. I find some way to do it to where it won't get that haze on it because I'm not painting that stuff because if I went through and painted all these gray parts, and it's not a lot and it's not complex painting. You're like, you're saying to yourself like, well, this is like only like an hour worth of painting. Yeah, I'm not doing it. Um, I would charge a gajillion dollars for it because I just hate doing it so much. So that's on the shelf for now until I can find some great paint and a brush. I don't know, my wife's an artist, so she's got a lot of painting supplies. Um, maybe I should just make her paint it. Is, how can I convince her? Well, she doesn't do things unless she likes doing them. She's remarkably similar to me in that regard. So how can I trick her into thinking that she wants to do this. That's the 3D update for today, Sunday, lazy day, but still hacking away at it. Still looking for functional prints. To be honest, it's quite hard because I can't, I'm just walking around here like, you know, and they say not to do this, but it's like, how else am I supposed to do it? Like you just walk around and like, okay, what sort of functional thing uh, can I do? Like, how about uh, a bracket that holds these cabinets shut? But then it's like, okay, you can make it, but then I'm selling a bracket to hold cabinet doors shut for this specific type of gladiator cabinet that is, you know, and like, is, is really anyone going to be really looking for that? Uh, I just don't think so. It's just very, very difficult. And you can say like, well, you know, the things that you print around the house, because I've printed all kinds of things around my house um, that I designed and printed, but they're just very bespoke. They're very, you know, single purpose kind of things. 
for a very specific thing. I'm looking for a more, something with a wider appeal. And so I'm inclined to think you just look at other products that are doing well on other shops, you tweak it, you spin it enough to where there's no problem with you selling your version of it, and then you sell it. Or you just find a version that you're okay to sell and you take better pictures, you put better marketing to it, and you sell it. And I mean, I know a lot of people don't like that method, um, but this isn't about feeling good at the at the end of the night. It isn't about sleeping well. Like, I did it, I pulled myself up by my bootstraps and designed my own product. And then, you know, like, I'm not in this, I'm not, I'm not trying to spend five years developing a product to sell. I wanna sell a product tomorrow. Um, and I'm just being honest about it because a lot of people are like, you should, you know, you don't want to put in the work and things like that. Like, no, I don't. I mean, I'd, I'd certainly rather it be as easy as possible and I want the shortest path to victory. So always on the lookout for that. But for now, art prints seem like, you know, kind of a thing where you can kind of be more creative and do stuff that, you know, maybe other people aren't doing or doing it a little bit different, easier than trying to find out, you know, what can I design? What kind of product can I make? that has a functional purpose. So always on the lookout for both things. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Be sure to like the video and subscribe for more content like this. I'm The Technicals, see you next time.